For over a billion years, sunlight has never reached the deepest parts of the ocean. It's an intriguing place, with hot springs on one side and ice-cold water on the other. The pressure down there is incredibly intense, enough to crush bones, and some areas are said to be lunar-like. At around 11,000 meters deep, a mysterious and scientifically promising underwater realm exists beneath the ocean's surface. Scientists have achieved remarkable feats like landing rovers on Mars, capturing images of black holes, and exploring the dark side of the moon's surface. Even so, one of the last unexplored regions, and one that seems eerily familiar, is right here on Earth. More than 70% of our planet's surface is covered with water, but over 80% of the water bodies remain largely uncharted. Without understanding these unexplored areas, we cannot effectively protect them, and that is why only six to seven regions of the oceans have been established and classified as protected zones. From this viewpoint, we can see the significance of delving into one of the most vulnerable and least understood areas in the universe a vast body of water covering a substantial portion of our planet's surface. Thanks to NASA's space program, we can now embark on exploration missions to these uncharted territories right here on Earth. The ocean is the birthplace of everything, including underwater icebergs, underwater volcanic activity, the Bermuda Triangle, and unpredictable vortexes. Alongside these marvels, a vast percentage of marine life thrives in hazardous habitats, demonstrating its resilience and adaptability. NASA scientists aim to enhance their understanding of the deepest parts of the ocean, located in oceanic trenches. This research seeks to define the limits of life on our planet. Exploring the depths of the ocean is far more challenging than venturing into outer space. The immense pressures encountered in the depths pose considerable difficulties. While you may not be aware of it, your body experiences roughly 15 pounds of air pressure for every square inch at sea level. In outer space, beyond Earth's atmosphere, the pressure is zero. However, when diving or using a submarine, the pressure gradually increases as you descend into the abyss of the ocean. The Mariana Trench alone is over 36,000 feet deep. That is even deeper when compared to Mount Everest, the highest mountain on Earth which only rises to a height of around 29,000 feet. The pressure at the Mariana Trench is over a thousand times stronger than at the surface. To give you an idea, it's like having 50 super jumbo jets all pour their weight on you at once. Because of its extreme depth, the Mariana Trench is one of the most dangerous places on Earth. The water is always pitch black, and the temperature is freezing, below zero degrees Celsius. The pressure keeps increasing as you go deeper, making it almost impossible for life as we know it to survive there. At such depths, the pressure is more than eight tons per inch. If any part of a living organism had an air-filled space inside, it would collapse instantly under this immense pressure. Now, imagine if there are even deeper regions in the ocean that have not yet been explored yet. After discovering liquid oceans beneath the icy surfaces of Saturn's moons, like Titan and Enceladus, and Jupiter's moons, like Europa and Ganymede, NASA has collaborated with the World Hole Organization Institution, WHOI, to investigate these extraterrestrial oceans. This collaboration utilizes similar commands and vocabulary employed in space exploration. Recently, marine biologists have deployed landers equipped with cameras and detectors to crash land on the ocean floor to gather valuable data and measurements. Furthermore, researchers have made an intriguing discovery. They found components in the depths of the ocean that resemble those found on other planets within our solar system. This revelation may even guide scientists toward the search for extraterrestrial life. Physics represents a main challenge to ocean exploration. Dr. Jean Carl Feldman, an oceanographer from NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center, explains that at great depths, water offers zero visibility, brutally harsh temperatures and crushing pressure, making it an inhospitable environment for exploration. Speaking about exploring and studying water, we're not just talking about one water body, but the vast expanse of water on the Earth's surface. And to cover those vast areas, 
Scientists need tools that can work for a long time, even months. But having people inside underwater vehicles for such long periods is costly and risky. Since the 1960s, there has been a global increase in ocean exploration technology. However, explorations that go into the depth of the sea has faced many challenges. Currently, efforts are being made at home and abroad to continue exploring the ocean with fewer obstacles than ever before. Exploring the ocean is increasingly difficult due to its high costs and technological complexities. It's not surprising considering the risks involved. Deep sea robots need to withstand the immense pressure of the depths, function without needing repairs or maintenance for long periods, and endure the corrosive effects of seawater. When it comes to underwater exploration, the devices used must be able to handle the extreme pressures in the depths of the oceans. If they're designed for human occupancy, like manned submersibles, they also need to maintain safe internal pressure for the people inside. To maintain this internal pressure, these submersibles often use pressure hulls. However, these hulls can be quite heavy, sometimes accounting for more than a quarter of the submersible's total weight. This weight limitation restricts the capabilities of the machine. Until recently, the extreme pressure in the deep ocean has posed a significant barrier to direct human exploration. Before a submersible reaches its desired depth, it takes so much time to traverse the sea before it starts to explore the surroundings. Because of these extended periods, these deep water robots are equipped to carry on operations without needing maintenance. The three primary robots that are being employed to traverse the deep waters are the ROVs, which are remotely operated vehicles. The HOVs, which are human-operated vehicles, and the UAVs, which are autonomous underwater vehicles. The HOV submersible is designed to carry a crew. ROVs are controlled through remote controls by a human on the surface ship. AUVs can function independently and are programmed ahead of time to carry out autonomous missions without ever needing a crew or being controlled remotely. During each mission, AUV surface, transmit all the data they've gathered, recharge their batteries, receive new instructions, and then submerge again to move further with their mission. When the AUV finally returns to the surface, scientists retrieve it and begin processing the data collected during its voyage. HOVs, while enabling direct exploration of the deep ocean by scientists, have a relatively short dive time compared to the other robot types. Typically, most HOVs can only remain underwater for approximately five hours. In contrast, ROVs have the advantage of being able to stay submerged for twice as long, providing extended periods of exploration. To maximize the limited dive time of HOVs, research institutions often employ a two-step approach. They first deploy an ROV to survey and explore the area. This initial reconnaissance conducted by the ROV serves as valuable groundwork, gathering crucial information. Armed with this knowledge, scientists can then guide the subsequent mission of the HOV, increasing the likelihood of making exciting discoveries within its brief dive window. The chemical properties of seawater can cause electrochemical reactions that can damage and corrode metals. This is an important factor that is considered when deep sea robots are being designed in addition to the challenges of high pressure and long dive durations. These robots need to be able to withstand the corrosive effects of seawater. To prevent corrosion, submersibles are designed with polymers to form a barrier between the metal structure of the submersible and the seawater. This helps minimize the damage caused by seawater and extends the robot's lifespan. Since the beginning of the 21st century, there have been significant advancements in deep sea ocean exploration technology, especially in the area of transporting HOVs to the depths of the ocean. One notable example is the Alvin, the flagship human-operated vehicle HOV of the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. Since it was first introduced in the 1960s, Alvin has undergone continuous upgrades keeping it at the forefront of technology. This well-known submersible has participated in several noteworthy missions, including locating a missing hydrogen bomb in the Mediterranean Sea, investigating the Titanic shipwreck, and providing its crews with views of the hydrothermal vents at the bottom of the sea. 
Currently, upgrades are being carried out to enhance Alvin's depth capabilities from 14,000 feet to 21,000 feet. Once these upgrades are completed, Alvin will be fully equipped to provide humans with direct access to approximately 98% of the ocean floor. The United States also has the Pisces 4 and VHOVs, which are currently being operated by the University of Hawaii. Russia has the MLR-1 and 2 HOV, and France also has the Nortile HOV, also capable of transporting humans to about 19,000 feet in the ocean. Japan also operates the Shinkai 6500 HOV, named after its maximum depth limit of 6500 meters or 21,000 feet. China's Jiaolong HOV has dived up to 23,000 feet. Deep sea remotely operated vehicles, ROVs, are another important tool for exploration. Although HOVs have come a long way through so many upgrades, ROVs are more trustworthy and efficient for deep sea explorations. Amid all of this new technology, the depth of the ocean comes with a lot of expensive financial demands. The cost of designing, building, maintaining, and repairing a submersible is very expensive. For these submersibles to go on dangerous missions, they need research vessels, equipment, and experts aboard such missions. The sheer cost involved in organizing and conducting deep sea explorations has been a significant barrier to comprehensive mapping efforts. And we have come to the end of this video. Let us know if you like it, and as always, keep exploring.